When I did my video on Leadenhall Market, which I'll link in the description below, a few people asked me if I'd be interested in looking at some of London's other ancient markets. I am, and Smithfield, the meat market in Farrington, was top of my list. The trouble is, it runs from 2am to 8am. When I saw how early I'd have to get up, I must admit I was a little cowed, but then I thought, no, I'm butcher than that. I'm not going to duck my responsibilities and chicken out. Not to mince words, my reputation was at stake. I'd have to be some kind of turkey to chuck that away. I could have just chosen to fill it with shots of the empty market or stock footage, but that would be a bit of a bore and make me look sheepish. Imagine the ribbing I'd get. It would need fleshing out if it wasn't going to appear poultry. Sure, I'd be putting myself to some inconvenience, but was that so awful compared to the feeling of bringing home the bacon with a really well done video? No, I said to myself, live a little. So, like a lamb to the slaughter, I rose before dawn and headed, chop chop, to Smithfield Market. Also sausages. Smithfield is technically known as the London Central Market, but I've never met anyone who called it that. It's a very old site with a long, long history dating back over a thousand years. When it began, believed to be some point in the 10th century, this was an open field. One theory is that Smithfield is actually derived from Smooth Field. Here, livestock were bought and sold. Actually, for most of its history, this was primarily a livestock market. This is reflected in some of the street names. In the days before railways, livestock would be walked here. There are accounts of flocks of geese having to walk all the way from Norfolk in December with little slippers on to protect their feet. Personally, I too enjoy a brisk stroll before Christmas dinner. Over the centuries, the city expanded and swallowed Smithfield up. The Priory of St Bartholomew was founded in 1123, the ancestor of the modern Bart's Hospital. Shortly afterwards, Bartholomew Fair began. This started out as a cloth fair, but became a more general fun fair every summer, as time went on, a red-letter day for every Londoner. It was also a popular place for jousting tournaments, with knights coming from all over Western Europe to compete. The place also had its dark side. It was notorious for the execution of heretics, rebels, criminals and political dissidents. The authorities were keen to demonstrate the penalty for those who dared to upset the social order. So a place like Smithfield that could hold a large crowd was perfect. Executions could be brutal, ranging from hanging to burning at the stake to being boiled in oil. Exactly how many met their end here is hard to say. The Tudor era saw Britain swing from Catholicism to Protestantism under Henry VIII, back to Catholicism under Mary I, and then back to Protestantism under Elizabeth I. Each change creating martyrs while exaggerating the brutality of the previous regime. Away from religion, two of the most notorious deaths here were those of Wat Tyler, the leader of the Peasants' Revolt that ended here, and William Wallace, who fought King Edward I for Scottish independence. Back to the market. It was formally established in 1137 and traded both in live animals and dead ones. There were a number of abattoirs on site. Blood and bones were dumped in the River Fleet, and to this day the Thames foreshore is littered with bits of animal bone. In the 18th century, the practice of wife-selling also took place here. It sounds barbaric, but in the days when divorce was complicated and expensive, it was often seen as an easier way to end an unhappy marriage. No doubt all the jokes about henpecked husbands, stroppy cows and chauvinist pigs have already been made. Obviously, I wouldn't stoop so low as to make such puns. By the 19th century, though, a busy livestock market in Farringdon was a bit of an anachronism. No longer the smooth field, this area was a built-up and crowded part of the city. Herds of animals being driven through the street were noisy, smelly and held up traffic. There was a general feeling around the middle of the century that London needed cleaning up and a live market with slaughterhouses on site was extremely unhygienic. In 1855, Bartholomew Fair was ended. 
That same year, the live market was moved to Copenhagen Fields, convenient for the railways. The remains of this are now Caledonian Park. In 1860, the meat market was established. I realise I've given two dates for the establishment of the market already, but this was specifically for the site as a meat market. To go with the market, a new building was constructed, and that's what you're looking at now. The architect was Sir Horace Jones, who was also responsible for Leadenhall Market, and it opened in 1868. It was designed to be cool and well ventilated, these being the days before modern refrigeration. When refrigeration came, it would start trading in meat from all over the world. The market would undergo expansions over the years to allow the sale of poultry and general produce. The Red House here is the oldest surviving example of a purpose-built powered cold store. The new market also took advantage of the Metropolitan Railway, incorporating underground railway sidings. The Great Western Railway did such a brisk trade in supplying meat to the market that they even built a special class of locomotive for the traffic. The market closed during the Second World War due to the risk of air raids, although there was an army butcher's school on site. Following the war, it was business as usual. 1958 saw the poultry market destroyed and replaced with a new state-of-the-art building in 1963, then the largest single-span domed roof in Europe. Despite the various changes wrought by modernisation, Smithfield retains the essence of the Victorian marketplace. Operating from the small hours to the rush hour, it supplies wholesale meat to the shops and restaurants of the capital. Visitors are advised to arrive before 7am to see the market at its best. Businesses in the area cater to the traders. There are cafes keeping normally unsociable hours to feed the hungry workers. And the Hope and Anchor, the Fox and the Cock Tavern are three pubs allowed to open from 5.30am. The Cock Tavern, stop sniggering at the back there, is under the market itself. While other wholesale markets, such as Billingsgate and Covent Garden, have been moved out of the city, Smithfield remains. But that's all due to change. Smithfield again finds itself an anachronism in fashionable Farringdon, and is set to move out to a new site at Dagenham Dock. The move has been on the cards for a long time and has raised plenty of controversy. Plans to demolish the western buildings have seemingly been foiled, with the area soon to become the new home of the Museum of London. As for the rest, it's to be turned into a mixed-use scheme, whatever that means. I think it's a fancy way of saying shopping centre. Me, cynical about a new development? Perish the thought. When the market goes, it will take a thousand years of history with it along with a lot of local colour. Hello all, I hope you enjoyed this slightly bare-bones trip through the history of Smithfield Market, and I hope you won't have too much beef with me over the meat puns. Let's just say that when I saw the opportunity for a pun, I couldn't resist going the whole hog. Smithfield is one of those sites I've often thought I'd like to cover, and I'm glad I managed to do so before it disappeared. I'd like to look at some of London's other markets in the future, so keep an eye out for that. And in the meantime, all this meat talk has made me hungry, so I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio.